rewind. Uh, we're not going to um, take them very lightly. We're going to come out and play our regular game. You know, this is exciting challenge and it's fun. I think we'll be competitive. Obviously, you know, we give it away a lot of height and probably a lot of weight. But, you know, experience-wise, we've got a lot of guys that, that you know, our, our starting five quite experienced. So, you know, hopefully um, we can catch them at the right end of the season. They're just starting out and we're peaking. It's just a matter of, of making sure they're confident and understanding that these other guys are good, but they're not superhuman. They make mistakes. You can steal the ball off them. Uh, you can shoot against them. Don't panic and just try to play our game. That's going to be difficult, you know, against the best NBA team in the world. Just we want, we want, we want, we want, we want, we want, we want. Hello, everybody, and welcome. It is NBL Rewind. Liam Santa Maria, Cam Luke, and I'll tell you what, if you haven't yet watched it, you've got to watch the moment. The NBL truly went global. We're going back to 1995. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, NBL TV. However you get to your NBL Rewind games, it is the time because the Perth Wildcats, fresh off a championship five days later, take on the Houston Rockets, NBA champions. The, the result, second half wasn't... Great from a Wildcats point of view, but it's such a cool game to watch as I welcome you, Liam Santa Maria. Thanks, Cam. Yep, epic game. Um, yep. We're used to the NBL NBA games now, but yes. we weren't then. First time mm. that ever happened. Yes. Great game. Um, great guests. Looking forward <laughs> yeah. to it. And we talk about the legend, the Olympian, the, the multiple championships, but it was early in his career. I speak of Martin Catalini. Mate, welcome to the show. G'day, guys. How are you? Thanks for having Hi. me on. Mate, any time. I'm going to hit straight up. How, how hard did you party, all right? Because it's a remarkable situation. <laughs> you win the championship. You're on a plane like the Giants and you had all had your bags packed. You jump on a plane to London. Uh, Ricky Grace had some good quotes in a, in a chat Liam had with him a while ago on nbl.com.au. He's like, yeah, I didn't drink as much, but some other boys hit it pretty hard. Were you one of those guys that celebrated that title, which, of course, was your first? I, I could put my hand up. I, I milked that championship for as much as I could, mate. I was 20 years old, uh, won my first championship. I had a ticket booked for London, and uh, I could, you could say I was, I was pretty excited. Did, the, did um, the stopover in Singapore, oh, I no. don't think the Qantas Club would ever want to see us again. <laughs> so, what was the... Like, it's such a remarkable situation and, and the, the idea of it. And we're going to talk about the win you had over there as well, which is almost largely forgotten, which is a, which is a Correct, big thing yes. itself. But the, the, the fact is, like, it's such a weird situation. Like, what was, what was it like being on the plane, championship, knowing you're probably 24 hours into, you know, traditional local pub to go over there and take on the NBA? But, you know, so there's some people not drinking as much as others like yourself that are like, I've just won an NBL championship. What was the feeling like amongst the camp? It was surreal. I mean, we knew, obviously, about halfway through the season that this was happening. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew we had a good team. We knew we had a yeah. good shot at the title. So it was, it was always on, you know, it was always uh, talk around the change rooms about, you know, who's going to match up on who, who, you know, once we got there, of course. Mm -hmm. So when we finally did win it, there was the thrill of winning the title and we celebrated, believe mm. me, we celebrated. <laughs> we may have pulled up the brakes a little bit earlier than uh, what you would normally expect, but uh, we were all in decent shape getting on the plane the next day, but I can't say we are in great shape getting off the plane in London. That was, <laughs> uh, I think we had two or three days to recover mm -hmm. off memory, which is a bit phasey, a bit hazy, but uh, we had enough time to recover. We were all young after. Can you walk us through the um, the training session that you had? Mm. I remember Fish telling me a couple of years ago, you guys had a walkthrough maybe in the underground car park yeah. at Wembley Stadium and you guys weren't feeling the best. No. And I don't even think we had a basketball. I think we were throwing around a drink bottle or something. <laughs> you know, Adrian Hurley, Dr. Dr. Adrian Hurley was instructing us to do this, to there, to there. And we were hazy, very hazy. And uh, it probably wasn't the most productive uh, training session we've ever been in. What was your was your head spinning? I mean, you mm. know, you're the you're one of the young guys on the team. You're, you're playing with a bunch of absolute superstars in yeah, Ricky true. and Blahov yeah. and JC and Fish and whatnot. And then it's a whole nother level above them, the guys yes. that you're about to play for the Rockets. I mean, where was your head at? Yeah, look, look, I'd come to trainings 
and look around and go, I don't belong here. What's going on? You got, you got Crawford, Ricky Grace, you got Fisher, you know, AV, Vlahov. You know, there, there was some, they, they were the biggest names in the sport going back to the uh, early 90s. So even just being around those guys, it took me a long time to get used to that. Like you said, throw it up another level. All of a sudden, you're talking about Clyde the Glide and uh, you know, Elijah one. And uh, yeah, that's a whole nother level. So yeah, my head was spinning. You can, you can, yeah, absolutely my head was spinning. Just on that, I'm, I'm probably being too specific here, but you're warming up five days after your first championship, probably a little dehydrated. What is going through your mind when you, you talk about that? You, you spoke about Clyde Drexler, Hakeem Elijah one and that team. Like, did, did, you, did you have a, like a chuckle and think, how the hell have I got here? And the fact um, is, I'm hung over, about to go up against Legion. We are, we are a very, we were a very professional outfit. We stopped drinking the night before. <laughs> my, don't don't my, get my, me wrong. Yeah. Don't, midnight, don't take midnight away that off. professionalism from us. <laughs> we, we, was, we, we had 24 hours of, of survival. Survive, <laughs> I can say that right. Now, um, no, once we hit the court, it yeah. was all on. You know, we, yeah. uh, we felt good. We had a uh, good shoot around in the morning. Um, look, we're realistic. We're playing against the NBA champions and one of the all-time great teams, you could, you could probably say, with one of the all-time great players and a couple of the all-time great players. So we were realistic. We were super excited. You know, it was, I look back and then I wasn't nervous. I was excited. When did you guys get the word that the dream wasn't going to suit up? Yeah, that, that was a, that, early on, I think. I think we knew going over there or maybe when we first got there, um, yeah, that was a disappointment. And oh, who was going to guard him? So mm. <laughs> it would have been great, though. It would have been great to be able to play against him. He, yep. he is yeah, one of the greats. And Someone then gone. tip, game tips. Yep. You guys take a fair punch in the mouth in that opening quarter. <laughs> yep. Nothing would go in the hole. You miss your sort of first 15, 16 shots sitting on the bench watching it all go pear-shaped in those opening few minutes. What was going through your head? I'm thinking I'm going to get on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's run out of options. Fair enough, too. No more options. Could you go any worse? Throw me on, coach. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, it's the great... It's one of the great... Words, big, that's for sure. It's one of the big what-ifs of, of NBL history is what if a few of those buckets had have gone in? Fish says that... Um, the big what if was for him was, are we ever going to, what if we don't hit a shot? <laughs> like it went for such a long time, but then all of a sudden in that second quarter, things started to it turn went, around. Yeah. I, look, my memory's very hazy. Um, time has diminished my memory a little bit. It's been a long time, but I do remember Blahoff and Crawford dominating at one start, like literally dominating. Mm. Mm. Um, Crawford, especially he was, he was running around. He was playing well above the rim. You know, he was a 36, 37-year-old man at this stage, at, the, at the, the latter stage of his career. And he was dominant for about a five or six-minute patch there. And, um, yeah, it was exciting to watch. I, I must say, I had the best seat in the house. I saw a lot of it. Now, you get to halftime. Liam tells a good story the other day on NBL Overtime that there was a little bit of an uh, inspirational motivation speech from your coach, and then someone sort of wandered past and heard it. Do you remember this? Oh, you might have to refresh my memory. <laughs> Adrian wasn't one for, for spraying. You know, he wasn't a big motivator in, mm. uh, in the way. He was very methodical. He was very, you know, this is the X's, this is the O's, this is what we're going to do. So if he did throw down a speech, we would have all listened, that's for well, sure. All right, I'll rephrase this. Liam oh, tells the story you. brilliantly. He's the investigative journalist here. Liam, what do you No, no, just know? Ricky's the man who tells the story well. Yeah. He says that, that Doc was, because you guys had cut it to single digits. Mm -hmm. You won yeah. the second quarter by seven, and he's in the change room apparently saying, like, fellas, like, we've got this. Like, we can run with these guys. And he says he turns around and sees Olajuwon walking and overhearing the comments. And he says, Olajuwon starts laughing. And Ricky says, <laughs> it was at that moment when he thought, these guys probably aren't all that worried. No, look, they probably weren't. They probably weren't. They've, uh, they've probably been in bigger games. But, uh, hey, you can only play against, you know, what's in front of you. And we had them to single digits at halftime.
Cam, I spoke about the, you know, the, was the big what if of that opening quarter. I feel like their win a couple of days later mm. over Real Madrid. Yeah, let's talk about that. Underrated yeah, moments let's. in Real history. Yeah. I, I agree, Liam, because there would be a lot of people who rightfully focus on this particular game, the one we've just shown. But to go back and beat a European powerhouse who took all before them that previous 12 months and earned their right there, obviously, and to be able to do what you did and, and beat them by seven points, that is a monstrous win regardless of what year it is for the NBL. Absolutely. And believe you me that they were going flat out. Mm. That is a team that wanted to win that game. They were European champions. They were Spanish champions. They held, you know, they, in the basketball world, NBA teams, yeah. Yep. Real Madrid, very, very close second. You know, that, that was a good team. I ended up playing with a guy in Sevilla in Spain um, with one of the guys on that team. And he first thing came up to me and says, Poor that Andrew Vlahov, he was a monster. I said, yeah, yeah. he's an angry man. And uh, we walked away and said, you know, we were, we were really proud of that win. You know, yep. They were European champions. We were the small team from Australia. No one at that stage gave Australian basketball any credit, mm. any credit at all. Our league, they looked upon it as if it was just a, a minnow league. So to get that win uh, was really good. You know, we, we felt very, very proud of that. Um, having, having had that unique experience, not just the Real Madrid, but, but the, more so the playing the Rockets and putting the NBL on that global stage, have you enjoyed watching the NBL NBA games over the last three years, knowing uh, that you guys yeah, were the trailblazers? Yeah, it's good. Um, you'll have to refresh my memory, but Melbourne played... OKC. Okay, uh, uh, gosh, who was it? Where they were really close. OKC, okay, yeah. yep. Thunder. OKC. Okay, that was a great game. You know, that was a fantastic. I thought that was a great exhibition of uh, what we can do. There's been some games where we've been blown out and a little bit embarrassed, but in general, I think we've held our own. I think we've done we've done all right. I, I think we've gained a lot of respect from that. Look, early in your career, of course, and, and then you turned into one of the best basketballs this country's had. Championships left, right, and centre. An international career, of course, two-time Olympian, so plenty of time of, of wearing the jersey. Uh, but this was a special uh, experience, a unique one yeah. that hasn't happened since. Where, where does it sit? Like, I know it was early in your career and you probably didn't play as much as you would have later in your career. But, like, where does it sit when it comes to looking back and, and having a smile about your career? Yeah, it is. Hi. You know, it's, these, are all, these are all experiences that money can't buy, right? You know, these are, you know, your bloke working your nine to five. They don't get these experiences. They don't get to go uh, on a plane, first class, travel over to... You know, uh, you know, a six-star hotel, play against the best athletes in the world on an international stage. You know, that, those, those are memories, you know, they're highlights in your life, not, not your career, but life where you go, you know, it's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, so it, it certainly sticks in my memory. You know, there's a lot that's faded away in the time that I've finished playing and um, throughout my career, but they, you know, I can, I can remember those games. They were, they were a highlight. I think I'm right in saying that that, that um, win over Real Madrid was the last time you wore the Wildcats jersey before you moved over to the, to yes. the 36ers. Well, why, why'd you make that move? I, I really wanted to stay with Perth. I, my heart and soul was with that team. I loved that team. You know, Andrew was my captain. I had Ricky, you know, in there. I was improving year on year. I really saw myself staying there. But Crawford played such a good year and such a good well played such a good final series mm. that they decided to stay Great. with Crawford rather than, than go with me. And look, I understood. I, I knew where I stood. Um, so my options were to stay in Perth under a diminished role or the same role or go to Adelaide where my role will increase over time. And look, in the end, it was a good move, but yeah, I, was, I wasn't so sure at the time. We, we, had, we had Phil Smythe actually join us on NBL Rewind uh, about a month or so ago. And we talked about those teams. And, uh, you know, for us as, as basketball fans, it just seemed to be like, hey, whoever wants to jack it can jack it. He tried to sell us that there was a bit, fair bit of structure. And you knew where the shots were coming from. Which one's true? How much structure compared to freelance ball was there? There was, there was a structure, no. Reads, yes. It was great. Okay. As a basketball, we'd, we'd, I'd come from Dunlap, who was... Structure, structure, yeah. structure. Um, I had a coach after that. <laughs> it escapes my name, it escapes me. Uh, and then we had um, 
you know, we had Phil. It was a fresher breath there. You know, mm. it was like, all right, boys, throw it up. Let's play. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, there wasn't much structure. It was a lot of the times Brett and I were pushing each other to get handoffs from Reezy. It was, uh, it was fun. It was good yeah. up and down basketball. But what we don't get credit for is that team is a really good defensive team. Now, mm. I don't put myself in that bracket, but, you know, we had Darnell Me, we had Brett who was playing mm. for D, you had uh, Reezy, most underrated big I've ever played with. Mm. We played some good D and we played good D and then ran out of it. You know, that's what people don't understand. Mm. You've got to play good D if you want to run. No point in taking it out of the basket and trying to run on someone. You've got to play a good B and then you run on them and you can play free basketball. And that's, that's what we did. Where'd you have more fun, Kat? In your, your time with the Wildcats, the Sixers or the Taipans? Ah, oh, Sixers. Uh, so the, year from the, the years I was at the Sixers, especially early on, the team just clicked. You know, you know when you talk about team, team chemistry and team bonding, we didn't have to do any of that. We just clicked. Not only did the players click, but all of our partners at the time, they clicked. Uh, it was just when we went out, we went out 11, 12 deep plus partners and we were happy. You know, we we're all in the same boat. You know, all of us had a little of something to prove. No, no one bar probably Brett had really made his mark. All of us were wanting to make that mark. Mm -hmm. And we had the opportunity with that team. And it was... Uh, it was fun. I mean, the basketball was fun. The city was fun. I mean, the city embraced us. Like, um, you know, the Crows were huge uh, and they were winning at the time. And the city embraced us, not as much as what they did with the Crows because they're football mad, but we got a lot of love. And it was, it was really nice. Well, I always like to ask questions of, of, of athletes who've been to the Olympics and their moments, if they can, the moment they get told they're going to the first Olympics. Like, do, do you remember it? Absolutely. Obviously. Talk us through it, because I'm intrigued by it and I love hearing these stories. Yeah, yeah, look, I, I, was, I was fringe, fringe, fringe. I, I, going to Sydney, I was literally last picked. Yeah. I knew it, everyone knew it. And I was the happiest man in the world, because I, I, was, I, I was sitting in a gym, I was doing a workout in Adelaide, and I was expecting this 50-50 call. You know, the, the call, you've made it or you haven't. Mm. And I saw the number come up, I saw Barry Barnes' number come up, I let it ring a few times, a couple of really big, deep breaths, <laughs> walked away from uh, the group that I was with, answered the phone, and Barry's gone, look, I'm not going to waste your time here. You've made the squad. I go, thanks. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. I didn't say anything more. I just said, thanks. And he said, all right, we'll, we'll speak later. I just sat there for a while and going, wow. You know, that's... Um, you know, I was I was pumped. It was, mm. it was really cool. It was, a, it was a moment I'll never forget. And the first phone call I made after that was to my old man and said, "Dad, I've made it." He's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> the Olympics, mate. I made the Olympics. He says, "Oh, great, son." <laughs> he wasn't as excited. As me. Yeah, but, I, uh, it was it was a special moment, and um, that feeling of you know euphoria. It was a euphoric feeling. It was, it was amazing. Hey, there's not many athletes that get to walk into their home stadium in their home country at an opening ceremony. Like, I mean, Drew's obviously carrying the flag, which, which, which yeah. is what added to the experience as well. Like, what was it like? He, he tells a really good story where he's all got pushed back and he was meant to be at the front and then it like parted like, well, he claims that everyone parted like the Red Sea yeah, and he was. rolls it's down hard. with this big Aussie <laughs> flag. But like, what, like the emotions of being... At a home Olympic Games is yeah. something very well, few athletes get to do. One of my greatest moments in the Olympics was before the Olympics. We were playing a warm-up game in Wollongong against Lithuania. And the game had finished, we played like we played like crap. You know, we were a bit disappointed the way we played. Anyway, we all got back to the change rooms and Drew is going, right, I've got something to tell everyone. He says, I'm uh, I'm gonna be carrying the flag. And the whole room just erupted, you know, it just erupted in one <laughs> euphoric, rah, you know, it was, it was amazing. It was one of, the, one of the greatest feelings. You know, we were also happy for him and we we're happy for basketball that we were representing the nation like that. It was in, you know, 2000 Olympics in our home field. It was a big moment. That, that was one of the best moments in the Olympics for me. That, that was really cool. And I actually got told that he was meant to keep it a secret 
but decided to tell you guys because of the situation where you're in right now, a little bit flat. So, and you, and you couldn't tell anyone. Is that true? Uh, if, if it was, yeah. I am the worst bloke to keep yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the last bloke you want to know. I was on the phone and go, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, think we had, I think we did have to keep it as a secret. Yeah. But it was, it, was like, it was only about two days out. Yeah. Two two days out. So uh, we were pretty isolated anyway. Mm. What about uh, what about Athens, Cat? Should should you have played more in 04? Oh, look, I think so. Yeah, Do, yeah. I, look, when the shit hit the fan, if I could say that, you know, when things weren't going well, Gorge went with what he knew and the guys that he played with, and you know that that is what it is. Mm. Um, certainly not bitter about it. Certainly not disappointed about it. That's what happens. You know, you roll with the punches sometimes, and um, yeah, I thought I could have played more, but maybe I didn't show enough when I did play. So certainly not bitter, but uh, if if you asked me the question like you did, I, yeah, I, I think I should have. Let's now talk about um, your time in Cairns because, um, I mean, do you think, you, was that when you personally were at your best? You won championships at those other places, but in 07, two votes off Sam McKinnon as, as league MVP, mm-hmm. um, second in the league in scoring, 51-point game against the Bullets. Like, you were killing. Yeah. Seven. Yes. Look, I played well that year. Played really, shot the ball really well. Everything went through me. It was like, the, you know, and please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not comparing myself to Andrew Gaze. But it was like the Melbourne Tigers offense. Everything went through Drewy to score at the Melbourne Tigers. He shot the ball a lot and it went in. The same thing at Cairns. You know, the ball went through me just about every single offence. Right. So I had a lot of opportunity. So look, I played really well that year. There's no doubt shot the ball really well. Um, we did all right. We made the semis. We had some shots to uh, try and make the finals, but that didn't happen. But it was a good year. It was fun. Look, I shot the ball a lot. It was great. <laughs> What is, what is ultra what is, green light? Ultra what, green light. What does that feel like? Are you rolling the preseason and coaches like a cat? Whew, we're going through you, man. You are going to have it all. You can do whatever you want, pretty much offensively. What's, what's it like? <laughs> <laughs> there weren't too many complaints. <laughs> I think at one stage he even said to me, "Look, I really want you to rest up on defense, so you got oh. more on offense." Oh, oh God! Oh, my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in, coach. <laughs> uh, NBL, NBL today. Uh, how much of an interest do you have in it? Do you still watch? Like, how does it all sit when it comes yeah, to the basketball I, fan? Look, uh, the last probably the last three years, I think the coverage has been amazing. I, I've really enjoyed watching it. Uh, the excitement's back in you know Perth. The excitement in Perth is is, is second to none. Mm. Um, I really like the package they put on uh, on TV. I love going to the games. Uh, am I a religious fan? No, I, you know, I, I certainly love uh, other things. I'm not there every week. But um, look, my young fella's starting to play at a decent level and I, I'm enjoying watching, watching him play. Uh, that's where the excitement for basketball's coming now. Well, where do your allegiance sit in the Catalini Cup when Perth and Adelaide go on it? Well, uh, do you have a leaning either which way? Um, not really. Uh, look, you know, I certainly loved my time, as I said before, in Adelaide. Yeah. Um, very grateful for the opportunities Perth gave me, both at the start and end of my career. Perth have looked after me fantastic. I mean, as a club, you know, I can ring them up and get tickets at any stage. Never any hesitation from them doing that. I really appreciate the way they, they've treated me mm-hmm. um, at the end of my career. Don't expect it, but they do it. Um, as a club, they're fantastic. You know, I've, 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 you know, a lot of time for the Perth Club. What does that, that Catalini Cup mean to you, Cat? I mean, these are two storied franchises. They've had a whole bunch of legends go through them and that, that thing's named after you. Does that mean a bit? Yeah, look, of course. Yeah, look, I, I get a lot of pride out of that. Um, uh, I, I know my mates take the mickey out of me a lot with that one. <laughs> uh, they, they always remind me what, what cup it is and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and they, they try and grade it on the World Cups in level. <laughs> it's always down the bottom. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's an honour. Absolutely. Two great clubs. Adelaide, Perth. You know, I don't think there's uh, been more two successful clubs than those two. So I'm very proud to be involved with both of those. 
Hey, just before we let you go, mate, we always appreciate you joining NBL Rewind and having a, a fun look back. Uh, it's been a weird last couple of months, of course, with so many people around the world, of course, and, and, and tough times and everything. So how, how have you been? How are you and the family going through these times? You're in a state right now, which is, which is doing pretty well with it, but has it been? Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're fine. We're good. Um, my daughter's a diabetic, uh, so we've been ultra careful through all this. Uh, we did the lockdown. We, we, we locked down pretty hard, really, and uh, just to be sure. We're in the best country in the world, and I believe probably the best city in the best country in the world at the moment. So Perth's a good place to be. Um, business is running, um, society is running, and uh, look, we look like we've got it fairly covered at the moment. How big's your house, Cat? Don't have a couple of spare uh, couches for Liam and I just to sneak <laughs> over for a couple of maybe six oh, or so weeks, yeah. haven't you? Even if you wanted to, and even if you, <laughs> yes, to you, you can't come here. This is, this is our premier. We don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hashtag NBL Rewind. Uh, Liam, any last thoughts before we let Kat get back to it? No, man. I just uh, It's great to have Kat on. We talk about, I think every now and then we start talking about guys who are underrated over the course of mm. NBL history. And people forget, I mean, this guy was a bucket, mm -hmm. absolute bucket and four championships sits amongst that, that group of, of uh, players that just have bundles of titles and um, needs to be remembered within that, those legends of the league. I no appreciate doubt. that. It was, uh, it was awfully fun. It was a fun time of the life. I, I wish I was 20 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, thank you. Having a chat to us, been so no much fun doing these type of things as well. We'll talk again soon. Enjoy it. Be safe. Thanks. Hashtag Kat. NBL Rewind. If you haven't seen right. the game, jump on, get to it right now. We'll be back next week with NBL Overtime.